Cloud9 might have just walked into the lion's den here. Now, I'm joined by Blue, so... Hey. You know, there's, there's, you know, we've got some NA spirit coming through here, but you've got to give us your thoughts on this one because you've had the pleasure of being able to cast Cloud, Cloud9 a lot recently. You've had the online season coming through here. And Inferno coming up obviously raised a couple of eyebrows even on the desk down there. What do you make of this? What are their chances coming into this one? If there's any reason why they actually let Inferno go all the way through to the end, it has to be because of the way that they played against, I believe it was Tempo Storm in Austin last weekend. Uh, they actually, after a fairly... Fairly bad uh, T side mm. performance overall across the weekend. For some reason, in that semifinal, uh, they actually did amazingly on the T side on Inferno there, and a lot of people uh, were thinking on that on that desk there that okay, this T side is not going to go well. They're going to get destroyed, and because yeah. of that, it's going to be an easy one for Tempo Storm. But it wasn't actually. It was very close, and they looked much better on this map than they had in the past. Now the other problem though is they're still going against Fnatic. So ultimately, I don't think that the small amount of progress they made against Tempo Storm again another thing that's actually on the rise right now. They haven't necessarily asserted dominance as of yet. Mm. I don't think it's going to compare as well. So ultimately, I'd still think this is actually actually going to be an easy one for Fnatic when you consider this more like sort of the grand scheme of things. Yeah, overall in 2016, what, Cloud9 have only officially won this map once. So it's it's a bit of a big disparity between these guys. Cloud9, during the online season, have barely played it in that sort of aspect. A couple of lands have shown up, but we are into the game. Fnatic will be on the T side, Cloud9 on the CT side. And what do we make of this so far? We'll have to take a look at things here now. It's Crims. He'll need to charge for things back up banana, but Fnatic actually playing it pretty slowly for the time being, and they walk right into that first shot from Stewie. Crim's not able to spot any of that. A good lineup from Cloud9, and they're going to spot the first kill, and that'll push Fnatic back to the crossroads. Yeah, Fnatic going to have to work for this one, but this is what we want to see. How are Fnatic coming into this? The first real viewing of it is right about now. So it looks like Fnatic have turned their attention over towards A. There are still three players, though, for Cloud9 waiting ever so patiently. No real rush on this. I think Slemmy's got all the information he needs, but it's Dennis to find him, so now the alarm bells are starting to ring. You can see the rotate coming in from nothing, and Stewie, so they're on route. Skadoodle just needs to stay alive here. And now he's going to fall back behind the Arches area for now. Fnatic chasing him a little bit, but not being so persistent about it. In the meantime, they do have to worry about the flank coming back, and there's Stewie picking up some kills, up to three now, as he shuts down Dennis and Flusha, leaving it all onto Wenton, and he jumps inside a pit. He, too, is going to be easily dispatched by Shroud, so Claw9, get the edge on the CT side. The combination between, what, Slemmy staying alive then for just enough time for that rotate to become effective, Stewie hitting those shots, this is a good start for Cloud9. And it, it seems like a brick-by-brick brick affair for them almost. It has to be very much like one step at a time because you're still against Fnatic here and they're still extraordinarily dangerous. So coming in with the CZs, Deagles, still got to be relatively careful at this point. Yeah, that flank is that flank is what ultimately sort of just wrecked them at the end of the round. If they'd been a little bit more persistent and they just pushed directly onto the A site after they had wrapped around and pushed Skadoodle back behind Arches, might have ended up being a complete site take for them. And that's where Cloud9 would probably freeze up a little bit more, but didn't really have any reason to as of yet. And Stewie kind of went off. Uh, again, echoing off of that recent performance we saw back at Austin where he did extremely well there too. So coming into this one, already pretty good for his team by picking up the 3K. So, for Fnatic, just a very, very slow start here. Just see if they can find anything. It's, And I, I wouldn't put it past them, let's be honest. These guys are ridiculous on pistols, so you just, just give them a chance in this. They still have, what, a smoke, a couple of flashes. They could easily work with it. They've been given a lot of room to work with as well. What, Skadoodle, Shroud, nothing. All sitting pretty far back in the site. So, just letting, I guess, the pistols do as much as they want to allow them to do, which is not a lot, hopefully. I think now they got the edge here, Cloud9 are going to be playing passive. I mean, this is obviously the default as to what you expect going into that second round. Cloud9, there's no reason for them to get aggressive, so they're going to play it back. Nice shot with the Deagle that goes on to Skadoodle. Brings him down to 14, but definitely not enough to kill him, and Skadoodle strikes back with a kill. Yeah, Fnatic not exactly uncommonly known for going for this wrap towards Arch. They do it a hell of a lot. So you can see nothing there, just kind of toying with it. The flash comes out, pushes them back, and they're retaining control, and they're not losing out on players just yet. Skadoodle playing safe. Shroud as well, keeping mind of maybe apps went and did go there last time. And now nothing going hunting, a little dangerous considering Flush is still at the top of mid, but it looks like Fnatic will be turning their attention towards B, but with only 20 seconds left, they, if they want to make something happen, it has to be pretty soon. And now that nothing's just taken down Flusher, they confirm that nobody's sticking around in this site. Rotation should be moving themselves over from the A site pretty quickly, and you've already got Skadoodle. He's moved through the highway, but 10 seconds left. This is going to be a rough take regardless. this. Good shot from Dennis, and then Wenton finds a second one, too. So hold on now. We're not done yet. Scott pushing through, though. He's going to get cut off by Wenton. Nicely picked up here. Nothing just spraying through. That's going to give away his position. But they've somehow managed to make this work, and now they've got a man up against C9. Yeah, and nothing's already tagged up a little here. 50 HP. You've got a UMP going over to Wenton. You've got a little bit of firepower to work with here. Nothing's going to step forward, try and take the first shot. Bait out a little bit of information. Spots one by Nubox. Shroud's got the kit, though. They've got a chance in this. Crims takes down Shroud and Fnatic. They had nothing to work with in that one. It was down to, what, 10 seconds to make that site really work for them? 
And for Cloud9 to lose that, that's got to be gutting. Because now the, now the problem is their economy. They're going to have to build this from ground zero. And especially with this happening after a piston round victory, this is really going to screw it up too. And the big question here, and we already have an answer to it, is are we going to look for their aggressive response to try and bring this back under their control? And they're going to go for it, which is an even worse scenario now. Because if they end up dropping this round, then they're going to have to go for a double save regardless. And that's going to give Fnatic the easy two, maybe three round lead. Let's see how Fnatic now approach this one. It was fairly hesitant to start with now, taking the open fights. Why not? If they're feeling confident, they've got it to begin with already. Scar being taken down there removes at least one element away. Been pretty dedicated towards CT Arch, so maybe Fnatic might start focusing on that. But bearing in mind only Shroud here towards A, this actually could be pretty difficult to hold on to or do any damage to. So yeah, Cloud9, this is a pretty tough situation to be in. Now they're sitting back here. Fnatic again. Same thing as seen in the last round. No reason to play very aggressively whatsoever here. Just take your time with it. See if you can catch any of those over-aggressive mistakes from C9 and punish them early in the round. And once you either have that advantage or the time just gets low enough, then just execute onto the site regardless. Nothing's going to be creeping up the arches to see what he can find. Yeah, kind of turned away from the flash then. Dennis going to be leading the way through. Shroud tucked away in pit. It's, it's going to be a tough one to dig himself out of. At this point, he does get the tag, but... If he gets any more, this would be impressive. He's slowly but surely being closed in on. Nice little 5 7 work towards Dennis, but again, still staying alive. Dancing around Shroud, making the most of this, bringing it back to something almost competitive. But by now, the bomb is planted. The positions are locked in. Fnatic should be able to weather this storm. And Flush as well is going to be able to hold this more than likely, unless he gets unlucky with the timing of the peak from other direction. It looks like he's just staying stable inside there to catch the library player first. Now they've got this under lock and key. No way they're going to be able to push themselves outside here, especially with just those guns left in play. Cloud9, they're going to have to wait and go for the double save now. I think they're well aware of that. Flusher just locking in on Slammy. Not going to get away from that. And Stewie after was a really good start, just going to have to sit here and accept his fate. No one looking like they're pushing towards App. So yeah, he's going to be fine. Staying alive on 15, keeping that armor in, into play pretty much at this point. But as you said, money's pretty much shredded here. Yeah. They're just going to have to sit and kind of take this one, I guess. $2,000 and the losing bonus just now stacking up. If uh, We're not going to see any buys here, so they may be able to go for a decent force up on the next round. But even then, it's going to be shaky at best. And there's going to be quite a few things missing. Probably won't see Skadoodle get the op, even though he's just sticking with the USP here. Money's just way too low at this point, And that's because they go for the force in that last round instead of just respecting Fnatic and letting them take it from there. Yeah, straight down mid, try and get a gun away, try and do some damage. And, well, it works. Stewie with the CZ comes in, it, it shouldn't be much more than this, but... Bomb has dropped too, they yeah. just don't have that out of here. But thankfully they're mopping up pretty quickly. Shroud found one more kill, but it seems to be all they're going to get. In fact, that is the case. When I get back control pretty quickly, they get the third round for themselves. Yeah, and Dennis only one had the MAC-10 anyway, so he was just hoping to kind of be the spearhead of that and just receive any damage coming his way. Fnatic now 3-1 up after what was a very good start for Cloud9. That second round upset is surely going to be in the back of their minds here, but as you said, they had enough money to go for a decent buy into this one, so they've gone for it. Yeah, so we're going to see how it plays out. The big key thing to look at, though, in this buy is the fact that there isn't really a whole lot of utility. Like, they do have four smokes to try and hold back Fnatic, but the thing is, Fnatic, I highly doubt they're going to go for anything really aggressive as of yet anyway. The bigger problem is they're not, they don't really have a whole lot of mollies or HE grenades to try and hold them back if they go for one conjoined together site take, which we can see pretty often for Fnatic. So with them missing that, that's where things can get difficult, as well as in the retake scenario, if they need those to force players out of positions too. Missing mollies are definitely going to hurt them. Yeah, and Fnatic are just going to play the time down. They have everything they need to, to pretty much take any of these sites late in the round if they want to go for it. It's all theirs, as you said. They've got what they need at their fingertips. But again, relatively slow from Fnatic and Cloud9. Just sitting back and waiting. Fnatic do eventually exert that banana control, starting to work their way through the map. You've got well, Wenton and Dennis looking towards apps as well. So. No rush on Fnatic here, just taking the time, seeing what they're up against, I guess, at this point. And Stewie as well, he knows there's going to be something coming in his direction here at any moment, but for the time being, just hanging back and waiting for that actually to roll in. Flusher just making some noise, but you can see there's a big, big group of Fnatic now pushing their way up through middle, four of them going through the choke point, and still it's going to be nothing jumped up on top here that'll be looking to strike first. Yeah, I actually like the stack towards Quad, I guess. Skadoo was playing super passive by Arch, so just saying, okay, if you want to take that, we can we can, we can, can work from that. And look at this angle, nothing's found. That could have been so much more, but then eventually just trades out. GW will close him down, so they do start gaining that. Control towards Ace, Skadoodle and Shroud still sitting, waiting so patiently. The Flash doesn't connect towards Shroud. He gets a shot at this, but Skadoodle falling means Shroud is all alone now. He does find one, finds two, Dennis falls. And we're down to a 3v2. This is still manageable, and Shroud is not done just yet. This man is having a good performance so far. 
And now just Flusher in a 1v3. 15 HP. They got the bomb plant, but this one looks pretty much settled. Stewie's going to get it on the retake. And again, Shroud coming in with the, pretty much the important kills at this point. He completely kills the hit. Three separate 1v1s, and I think it was two rounds ago, too, where he pulled the Houdini and found two kills <laughs> in the same position. So he's pretty good right here. And now this is going to be an area that Fnatic will have to look to break later on here. A lot of their focus is probably going to be on that pit area when they try to go for ATIX throughout the rest of the half. But that's good note. They bounce back on the first gun round. A little bit worried they weren't, they weren't going to be able to hold that. And another big key thing, too, is they get the op for free. And Skadoodle's money was <laughs> pretty shot for quite some time. Yeah. So yeah, this is a real redeeming factor. And the one thing I would say is, well, a lot of people are looking at nothing for having the big, well, not big, but a, a performance increase. It's good to see Shroud having it as well, because that's always seemed to be a win condition that people wait for in Cloud9 when Shroud does start you know, turning up. It does become a very deadly side. So this is a really good sign. If he's starting to play well, we could see a really nice competitive game here. But again, this is so early. Fnatic are still very much in this one. Two to three right now. Still have enough to go for the buy. So... It's certainly not a worrisome time at all for Fnatic yet. They do want to be a little bit careful, though, because if they let them get too much money, then Slummy's going to get the op, and we saw that last week at Austin, how aggressive he got, playing the play, playing pushed up at the card angle and even pushing down to a certain degree. Unfortunately, though, the opera currently for C9's Kadoodle is going to get dropped pretty quickly here at the beginning of the round of Crims. Kind of unnerving if... Skadoodle had the angle and Crims still gets the shot. I imagine Crims got legged at some point or hit maybe like, through the wall. Yeah. So, a little unfortunate, I guess, for Skadoodle at that point, but again, it's Crims. This guy certainly can go off at any point, but still Fnatic kind of setting things up. Wenton going to drop down the smoke. It looks like we're going to be seeing again another A hit coming through, and why not? If you're taking Skadoodle down, you know you're at least one man to the good towards that site, normally. So, Fnatic still taking their time, and we can see the Mollies coming out now to try and force somebody out. That smoke is going to make them think now that somebody was sitting inside of that cub, and they wanted to make sure they got them out of there safely, but it's not going to connect. Still very hesitant from Fnatic, but they are very quickly shifting themselves over to this B-side to go for a direct hit, keeping Dennis here again to make some noise. Yeah, Stu's starting to get a bit of an inkling about this one. You can see him. He already started to kind of tend towards A, but now heading back through, you're going to start seeing the smokes, the flashes coming to place. He does a quick little pop flash. He catches three of the Fnatic players, actually, and Flush is now relatively separated, allowing Stu to get round towards the site, but absolutely no impact came from Slemmy then on the site, sadly, and it's now Stewie left in the smoke where he likes to be just above it, finding Crims, but no more. And again, that B-take is looking pretty deadly, especially late in these rounds. So we tried to go for the trademark smoke push there. Only manages to find one kill from it, though, but he also does get some decent intel. Now it's all about how the rest of the members from C9 are going to re-execute onto this site. And Fnatic have gone for the cheeky two players inside of Emo thing, so we're going to have to see if they're able to detect that right now. H is going to go back. That should do some pretty serious damage, but in the meantime, JW's found the first pickup, and Wenton's going to be able to roll right out and find the second there. So not a whole lot of success for C9 there so far in the retakes. Fnatic strike right back, and now even worse so, they're just going to reset the CT economy. Yeah, Fnatic's starting to gain that little bit of control that you worry about seeing, and the way they're doing it is pretty darn impressive considering they've been, not, I wouldn't say struggling to hit A, but they've been pretty respectful towards it, and then turning and hitting that B site with so little time left and being so proficient at it, it's been kind of kind of terrifying. But again, there was uh, a CZ, P250's brought up here, a flash for, for nothing, so yeah, they can maybe get a gun or two away, but at most, stacking four players out towards A as well, Slemmy left to kind of just deal with it on B at this yeah. point. Never where you want to be, but I guess that's how the cookie crumbles. Interesting that, I mean, obviously Slummy's been the, the default B player, so it makes sense, but I, I don't think Slummy has like a single kill yet. At least the f three or four rounds ago, he was only sitting... Zero to five at yeah, the moment. Yeah, on one or two kills, so... Definitely not the player you want to tr entrust a B site to on your own, but considering the odds of this round anyway, it's not going to look so hot. However, Stewie almost grabs two kills, picks up Dennis, and grabs the location of JW, just not able to grab the aim properly enough, but a good start at the very least, taking down one of them. What a way to end that little bit of a spree he might have had going on, just catching the nade. Wenton waiting pretty patiently for the push through the apps, catches out Shroud. So, so far, clean enough. Losing on Dennis isn't the worst thing in the world. Certainly not a recoverable gun at this point. Bomb site's completely free. Slemmy and Skadoodle just kind of left on the wrong place at very much the wrong time. Yeah, and they'll probably just post up for exits too. It's not even really like these guns are worth saving. It's a P250 and Slemmy doesn't have anything invested, so definitely not worth saving. Probably just going to creep themselves out towards the middle to look for pick up or two if they can find it. But this round in itself is definitely going to be under the control of Fnatic, and they'll move up to 5 2. Yeah, and it's Flusher who's probably going to find them first, who has the MAC 10, so he's going to be wanting to take these fights and try and chase them down. He can happily sacrifice that MAC 10 and say, if you really want it, take it. But any more would be a little bit of a loss here. Crims with the rifle going to be a little bit cautious, find a new avenue of approach, and Skadoodle might have a shot on it. Good bit of money made there for him, and especially if he's building towards the AWP. If he can get away with that AK, that's actually not bad. 
Unless Wenton goes on a really serious chase right now, Skadoodle's actually getting away with this AK. So again, yeah, as we mentioned before, with the economy from C9 being in the place it's at, not bad that they escape with this rifle. Another thing they don't have to buy, C9 has often had trouble. We'll see in a second. Nicely done. He actually takes down JW by the end of that one. And that's going to be the op going down. Nicely played. And they're going to have to rebuy that now, but they can sort of afford to do that at this point. Yeah, so we've actually got the double AWP now coming out. So... I'm looking... Stewie and Skadoodle taking it? I guess Skadoodle had the front spawn, yeah, which is, is fair, but... So Stewie is going to play this closer to the B site. Mm -hmm. This is what I talked about before. We saw, them, we saw him play this last week at Austin, and, and to a certain degree, uh, Stewie was a much better offer in some of the mm -hmm. matchups than Skadoodle because he played this aggressive play style. He took way more risks than Skadoodle, so, to, so in those positions, he was able to move out and grab way more of those opening kills. And we're going to see the first one scored by Skadoodle this time as he catches Dennis out in the open back by mid. Yeah, I think Skadoodle heard you saying that. He's like... Thanks, Blue. I'm just going to make just sure gonna, I get things it's going. It's my turn now. <laughs> Still, we had his time last week. That's it. I'm here to prove I can play aggressive op as well. Well, we'll find out pretty soon. Fnatic are lining up for... It looks like an A hit so far. Losing out on Dennis means they do lose that kind of... He'd been almost, not necessarily a linchpin player, but he'd been playing that bait player towards A, just sticking around, keeping these players dedicated towards site, even if they were heading towards B. Now, without that, they might have to go for a commitment here. We'll see what they go for. Again, Skadoodle playing pretty passively. No one really making those challenges towards mid later into these rounds, backing all the way back. Nothing, even playing on the side itself, just to really lock in with Shroud. So it's going to be a pretty tough one to crack. And so far, Fnatic just kind of probing for options. This could be pretty tough, though. Skadoodle making the most of it. That's what you want to see happening. Taking JW down and retaining pretty much dominance by CT Archie. He's going to get some more pressure soon, and nothing's waiting for this. He could easily get flashed in by Shroud if they do need support. And well, let's see what Skadoodle can do. Smoke's gonna come in just to block him off. They don't want to take the risk on it, but perfect timing on the peak from nothing. Does massive damage to Crims. Down to 11. Locks on the headshot there and grabs two kills. Wenton and Crims both go down, and now it falls to Flusha. Lurking his way in, back over here from the porch angle. Spots one, but he's gonna miss the connection. Gives it away, and then Shroud rolls right on the balcony and shuts it down. C9, a nice round for them. Some good pickups from Skadoodle and some good timings there on the peak from nothing. He's able to shut it down and keep Cloud9 in the mix here. Great combination play towards CT Arch. This is this is pretty rare. Normally, Fnatic are so proficient at working through Arch. It's it's beautiful to watch, but they kind of get done on that one. Now their money's pretty up in the air. Of, of course, Wendon's still got a bit of cash. They can drop out a couple of pistols here and there, but certainly not you want to be coming into these rounds. And look at the utility now with Cloud9. They've got so much to play with here. Still have that double AWP, and they're actively looking for this. Kadoodle wants to kick this one off. They did start pretty well once he got that opening pick, but has to be fairly respectful. You don't want to overly challenge these guys. But there you go, Stewie with the aggressive AWPing, paying off this time. Pushing out there, picks up the first kill, Fnatic. Try to posture up for some information, but it does not pay off well. And I like this about C9 now, too, about how they're not getting overly aggressive about it. Stewie doesn't really see anything else over there towards Banana, so there's no reason to stick around and potentially risk himself getting Juan Digged or uh, to basically overwhelmed by three or four players from Fnatic. So instead, just picks up the kill, falls back. If three or four decide to push, then it's going to be much easier to handle. And they still have that smoke and flash, and these B hits have been <laughs> pretty worrying if you're a Cloud9 fan at this point. Again, though. They still have the mollies, they still have the nades, they still have a lot for Cloud9 to slow this hit down, make it pretty costly, and allow players like Skadoodle to pretty much get to the side very, very early on in this. But here we go, already Fnatic gonna go for the hit. Dennis gets swept aside, we're down to three. Wenton's the one with armor who's just burning alive at this point. And finally, it looks like Slemmy and Stewie have been starting to work this side down. Slemmy having a good time, just down by Nubox. And for once, it looks like they've dealt with this, this B hit that was pretty deadly earlier on, but of course, Fnatic working with less than ideal conditions do get shut out. So Cloud9 keeping this one pretty close here now. And now there's that Stewie we wanted to see getting aggressive and then falling back to shut down the final couple of players. But of course, that's Fnatic just on an upgraded pistol round, and it's essentially going to be the same thing here. A little bit more utility and some players reinvesting into armor this time, of course. So maybe a bit more of a threat, but for the most part, this should still be easily handled by Cloud9 when you consider that double op setup is in play. And Stewie, at least from last week's performance, looked to be in pretty good shape from that position. However, most of the members of Fnatic, they're going to be pushing themselves up alt mid. And it'll fall to Skadoodle to hold this off initially. This could be quite dangerous if all three of these players push inside and he doesn't fall back in time. Oh, missing the first one as well is going to make it even worse. They are hot on his trail and Trout just gets swept aside. JW's quickly there. It is never over till it's over with Fnatic. These guys are making the most of it. Nothing caught with his pants down, being pressured from CT Arch. Puts away Flusher, but this got deadly real quick. Crimson recovered the rifle. We've got a couple of actual guns recoverable here, but this retake is not going to be easy for Cloud9. 
And now, with three left alive here, they've got a choice to make too, especially with such good control. Do we go for this, or do we just let them have the round? But considering the gun's still in play, they've only found one upgrade. They're gonna go for it, but Slemmy running out in the open while tossing that molly, getting a bit of extra distance, but that's not gonna matter. Stewie, surprised when JW on? jumps down from the balcony, and now nothing, he's got no choice, he has to save. It's it's so crappy too when you consider, you can see all the damage that was already done. This should have actually been a pretty plausible retake, but there's just no intel given. Fnatic get themselves into post plants, and seeing out have no clue what's happening to themselves. You said it from the start, how risky that could have been for that all play coming in. You could have gotten run down, you could have gotten caught out, and then Shroud being the one picked up, and then it all just fell apart so quickly. Yeah, I think we're all just scratching our heads after that one, Scar. I, I don't know what happened that round. That was just so far from what you'd want to see from Cloud9 being punished in those sorts of situations, but yeah. The big key there, too, is the fact that not only does the does the hallway push come in at the perfect time to catch Skadoodle off guard and the bait shroud to come out, but mm. also when they push themselves, uh, I forget exactly what it was from Fnatic, but the player that actually wraps back around porch there, too, at the same time that they're pushing down long haul, if that didn't happen, Cloud9 still probably could have held the balcony rush, but because that happens and that catches them off guard, too, because for some reason nobody's watching porch side. Yeah, I think it was JW just kind of yeah. flew up there at that point. At that point, he picks up multiple kills, too, and then that just opens the gateway for them to flow into the site. Well, that keeps Fnatic in the lead, at least on the T side so far. You've got the UMP coming out for Flusher. If you've ever seen these guys on Cobble, it's something you wouldn't be too surprised in seeing. This guy is actually ridiculous with this weapon anyway, so I wouldn't even see it as a downgrade in his hands in, in comparison to anyone else. But into this one we go. Fnatic so close on the jump-off point towards B here. Crims, Dennis, and Flusher lining up for that. Stewie is waiting, obviously a little more passive than previous. Still with the molly to put into place if he wants to, slow him down. And you're going to have to go for the flash here in the smoke and try him back away as Fnatic are doing this three-man hit. It's actually paying off pretty well. They've already singled out Slemmy. Where's Stewie? Where's nothing? They've got complete control of the site here. The problem is Stewie couldn't play it aggressively in this round because of the fact that he's not going to be able to afford the rebuy. Last round, he could die and then still get himself back into the off on this round, but now we can't afford to do that. So the hit comes into the B site. Look, they're all completely boxed out. And Shroud. they still have Dennis in here, too, to keep things alive. But they've actually completely abandoned this hit. And in the meantime, they're pushing through mid choke point where there's a completely open A site. Shroud's going to have to try and spot this, but he, too, is being pretty passive about it. He did move back towards this. He is going to catch this out. Just has to go for that peek around the corner. But he's also got to call the reinforcements away from the B site. They found Dennis. They've got to know something's wrong. The smokes have faded. And Shroud just sat here like, I, guys, I, I don't see anyone. Finally he catches the of JW in mid, and that's it. Goes for the the peak with the molly in hand, but the reinforcements are in the way, but this is not a good situation to be coming back in on at this point. Fnatic are already very well set here, and they pretty much just played Cloud9 like a fiddle in that round, dragged him over to B, left Dennis there just as bait, and just went, okay, well, you're going to leave A open for us? Great, that sounds fantastic. We'll take that and put the little cherry on top. They get the plant, keep four players alive, and Cloud9, well, you just gotta, you just got to accept this one. And that's actually a really good choice from Fnatic too, not to risk the retake being successful from C9 when you consider that North American teams have this very consistent problem, especially if they're newer. Sklana doesn't have this as much, and I'll explain this in a second, but uh, they have this very big issue where they aren't able to properly communicate these all intakes, and they often just have to fall back and save. What happens there is Cloud9 have sort of just decided to themselves, okay, we're just sort of going to overreact to this way more than often. If we see a piece of intel that makes us think it's going to the site, then we should rotate early and whatnot. They do it there. Fnatic get full control of the site, and they have things smoked off, but then they take advantage of that by saying, okay, they've probably all in rotated, so let's just go back around to the A site and take control of that way. They have nobody presented, and that's exactly what they do, and it works out great. C9 have no choice but to save, because they, because Shroud gets that intel for them way too late. Flusher opting to stick on the UMP. He has, I think, 5k at the moment, but he's happy to go on this and just build bank for himself and pretty much be able to drop out anyone on his side throughout this half. But still, on the other side, there was enough money left over to be able to drop out. I think it was one of the two players who got picked up there. So they all have what they need in this one. But look at Dennis, like a pit bull unchanged, just plowing straight in towards CT Arch. And oh, he gets punished for that skadoodle, adjusting a little bit here, supporting nothing from a different angle. They're switching up a touch. And at least they get the opening advantage now. A little bit misguided to go for the direct push there. Didn't have any utility supporting him or anything, but I suppose that comes off of the hope that nobody's watching it. Definitely not going to be the case on that <laughs> angle, however. As now... Fnatic do fall away from the A site hit. Again, same thing as last round, though. Wenton is going to try to keep this alive with the smoke. Whereas the other four are getting ready to push up Banana. Slemmy and Stewie have to be the ones to be able to shut this down. It's not going to be an easy task. It's looked like, I wouldn't say a weak link, but possibly where Fnatic like to abuse at the moment. And at the forefront of this will be Flusher probably heading in if he wants to. Smokes go down. They flash up. They do manage to catch both of these guys in the flash. Stewie catches one. As they do push in, that's Flusher gone. 
But Willie will just put out the list. The, the rest of the three players, they've got a good idea what's going on, but they've still not put any other players over here from those A dedicated uh, Cloud9 members. So nothing, Skadoodle and Shroud were late to this if they actually do come over. Finally, nothing joins. Slummy's being a little bit too cautious too because he knows how sort of iffy he's been so far with this fragging power. Taking a direct one v one is not going to be in the cards for him. Nothing though. He's here. He's arrived. He's picked up two. A little bit of trouble grabbing that third, but unfortunately JW's got nowhere to run. So nothing is going to swap over to the pistol and close things out. 3k. He shuts it down on his own with Stewie holding the fort back up on the site. And you know what? I said he was late to the party. At least he turned up. You know, keg in hand. He was ready. Don't worry, I'll never doubt you again, nothing. But uh, once you got that, as you said though, Slemmy being very passive in that kind of, maybe a very cautious at this point, because as you said, he's not having the biggest stuff half, so maybe not wanting to just feed into the Fnatic grinder at this point, but still, stayed safe enough they were able to keep this round in check. So five to seven at the moment, Fnatic still firmly in the lead here on the T side, but this has been a very competitive half from Cloud9, so I'm looking to see what they can bring once we go into the second, but still, a good couple of rounds to play out here, and those rather patented smoke flash up mid that we normally see coming out from Fnatic. Not quite gone to just yet, but already exerting so much control here, pushing Skadoodle pretty far back. And let's see what he can do now. As Fnatic do line up. Don't gonna, quite go for it yet. The flash is going to do a good job of baiting out the molly from Skadoodle. He's going to try to counter flash this though, and the timing on it's good. It actually blinds a lot of them, but the timing shot, not going to connect exactly where he needs it to. So falls back behind Arches. Now it's Slemmy's turn. He's already rotated over here. That leaves Stewie on his lonesome there onto the B-bomb site. T-Smokes are coming back in to block Slemmy off, so hopefully he won't be able to pick anything up for these guys. And they're pushing in. Slemmy going for the blind fire. Not really going to connect anything. Still only the loss of Wenton, but Skadoodle hugging himself behind the pole right now. Picks up one kill. Misses that second connection, however. JW trades it out, and Slemmy, again, failing in the 1v1. JW's going to find a second kill. Stewie, though, he's still alive on this B-bomb site, and he's going to be tested in a moment because the rap's coming in. He knows what's coming his way. Great flash. He doesn't know it yet, but that slowed them down, buying enough time to sh for Shroud to get down to the bottom of mid, play support if needed. And once that smoke fades, he could watch the cross here if he needs to. Crims playing through ruins, but there we go. Stewie takes a bit of a wide peek, gets punished by JW. Now Shroud watching the cross get smoked out. JW might take the shot and through the smoke. JW on four kills so far and in quite some fashion, leaving just nothing alive. And what? It looks like he wants to go for this one. JW so desperately low, but still such a threat here. Oh no, he doesn't even notice. He's camping himself back over on the balcony, on, sitting on the porch side. So JW is going to grab the ace. and so well played from him as well. Just taking those one versus ones with style. Not even a lot of them happening in sequence too. Cloud9 is, mm. just seems to be taking all of those separately, unfortunately. So it's pretty easy for JW. He just has to pick them off one by one. And through that, he's going to grab the ace. That has to be a little gunning for Slemmy again as well, who sat there going, if only I'd stopped, if, if I'd done something to maybe buy a bit of time, we could have could have had more of a chance there. But again, it's Fnatic, it's on Inferno. This is a weakened Fnatic as discussed, but there's still a lot of these Fnatic boys there kicking in this one. And again, Wenton's not exactly doing badly either. 7-6 to six at the moment, he's having just a fine performance so far. We might see those CT-sided issues creeping in, but we'll see. At the moment, Skadoodle, that glass cannon looking a little shattered at the moment, down to 20 HP. Mentioned earlier too about how we're starting to see we're seeing Stewie play a little bit more passively than we did mm. in the last week. The thing about that last week's performance is it's up against like Tempo Storm and a lot of the other North American teams. A team that you could put on sort of an equal level as C9 as far as just general matchups are concerned. But Fnatic, they're a whole other tier above, and I think that he's giving them a lot more respect in regards to his position. He doesn't want to be taking as many of those big risks unless he knows he can afford to either give that gun over or afford the rebuy in the next round. So obviously playing things a little bit more passively. It's working out so far though because five to eight. Still a pretty respectable scoreline. Certainly not over yet. Crim's going to smoke out towards CT Arch. A little flash to follow. And again, Cloud9 very rarely playing close towards mid plane. Pretty far back at this point. Shroud, after having a very big opener, has been kind of left out in the cold here. Not really having too much time to play into these rounds. And Fnatic again, start that clinical take towards A. Stewie and Slemmy still dedicated towards B. Very little information gathered from Cloud9 so far as they're playing so passively, but I think Shroud's going to get a bit of a glimpse soon. Three to four players starting to head his way. He does take down one, can't transfer towards Crims, but Skadoodle still playing close by. Going to have to deal with this under pressure, but doesn't happen. Crims and Flusher combine. And we're left with Stewie and Slemmy, those B players having to play retake again. Good damage is done, but again, in these 1v1s, C9 players cannot seem to execute them. So Stewie's going to try to creep in, grabs one of them. The second one's in the pit, though, and that's going to be Wentu, who's still at full HP at this point. 
Stewie's up close and personal here, but also Flusha sitting back up inside of the long haul there. He's only got one HP, however. If they do this correctly, they can still manage to pull up this retake. Stewie is going to find Wenton first, and I think he just saw Flush as well. He knows he's up there, but no! What? There's going to be a full peak coming out there from Slemmy, and they just leave the angle open for Flusha. Aww. And now Stewie, he's going to essentially run out of time trying to jump up there, but Flusha can just play with him now. He's going to sit inside or even throws the pistol out, and it works! Look at this and he guy. finds one the kill! HP. Nicely done by Flusha, and that is going to be Fnatic's ninth round. That is how you do it. Just toying with your food. Flusher, what a beast play then. One HP and he still managed to work out those two players. And you thought once you saw Wenton sitting there and he gets taken down, oh, this has to happen, but... I guess... I guess either the X-ray threw me off or that he just didn't see him back over there inside of the hallway. I thought he was peeking at the time to try and find the trade, but it doesn't look like he saw him, so... So let me just goes for the full defuse when he has the angle. And you could also almost almost make the assumption they had to understand maybe Flusher could have been there, considering where it was planted, where Wenton was, and how the fact they'd taken through Quad and CT Arch and pushed towards site. There's very few other places he could have been to be able to create any sort of hold towards the site. But again, hindsight 2020, X-ray on. We'll have to look back over it and see if he even caught a glimpse. But at this point, they still have to accept the fact that Fnatic's T-side is looking better and better. And especially with Cloud9 in such a shoddy position money, well, money-wise into this round. You've got, you've got to be understanding this is probably going to be a, what, a 10 5 half? Yeah, more than likely here, unless unless that flank pays off big again with Fnatic more than likely just going for a just going for a mid hit. Mm. Because you do remember a couple of rounds ago, well, it was on the pistol round actually, uh, that Cloud9 did manage to pull off that flank by getting aggressive through B, and Fnatic just weren't ready for it for some reason. So they have decent utilities still on Cloud9, so they can actually hold off a rap hit around the, around the, uh, around the rotation side. But mm. this sort of flank needs to start right now, and unfortunately it doesn't look like it's happening. No. Stewie's was chomping at the bit to get towards Banana, but never made the move down there. Slemmy's kind of hesitating. Do I stick on B? No, you need to start making the play. Good flash comes out again, though. Skadoodle waiting so patiently to land these shots, but backs out of it. There goes nothing. Now suddenly it's down to Shroud and Skadoodle to try and hold on towards A. Slemmy and Stewie are on the way, but it's a little too late for this one. Skadoodle rails down. Dennis has a bit of a lineup here. Guess. Oh, Skadoodle! Sick damage comes out. Now it's down to a 1v2, but... How much can Stewie do here? He's got the drop on one, spots him in the smoke, just making a quick play, and he can't make the jump up towards the plant. He almost had a glimpse at him, and he actually finds JW. He knows where Flusher is. He's got himself a gun. He has no kit, though. This is a 1v1. And Stewie, this takes balls of steel to try and play against Flusher like this, and Stewie gets it. Stewie and Skadoodle combine to finally bring this one back, at least with a chance for Cloud9 here, and, wow, that Deagle play from Skadoodle is going to be remembered for a while. <laughs> And there you go, there's the apex of Stewie now, as it seems, finally coming into form. They brought him into this roster way, way long ago at the beginning of this year to reform Cloud9 from the bottom up, as it seemed, from the core three that we saw previously. And now he seems to be coming into shape finally. Starts at Austin, and here, currently top fragging against Fnatic as well, doing a fantastic job. Held that B-site essentially solo, too. I mean, I don't mean to be too rude about it, but Slemmy, unfortunately, wasn't being much help there. Well, it's all yet to be seen. It's it's how can Cloud9 coming into this T-side? Will Fnatic be able to withstand? I think we're going to find out pretty darn soon.
six to nine was the start of this game on the half. Now, Fnatic are still in the lead, but there were signs of life here for Cloud9. And as said at the start of this, Inferno being the map, it was always going to be a very tough task for Cloud9 to come into. But now we're going to see the other half of things. Now we're going to see Cloud9's T side. What do you think we have to look forward to here? Uh, it's not really what we have to look forward to. It's more of what we have to be cautious of for Cloud9 mm. because the T side is always their question. Do they bring their A game uh, on, among their T side, especially on a map like Inferno, um, or do they end up slumping here big time? And especially with like the problem being is that is that it's almost like a four-man team right now with Slemmy only sitting at like two and eleven, yeah. uh, almost always going down right at the beginning of the B side fights there. So he needs to be able to step up here because you're not going to make the four-man. The four-man team sort of work there, unfortunately, as it seems like he's having some issues going against a much higher caliber squad at this point. But we'll wait and see how things go. Because like we said previously, after a pretty poor T-side performances for most of last week, and they did seem to figure things out on their last day back over at Austin. So maybe that's going to carry over into this event as well. I'm going to find out pretty darn soon as we are underway, of course. Cloud9 now, Cloud now on their T-side. Already taking over some apps control. No... No real commitment so far, but it's Lemmy being the utility player at the point. Does have the smoke to hand, does have the flashes. We'll see where they go for at the moment. There's been no real real contact yet either. It's just been a very slow, methodical take from Cloud9. But there you go. Good start here. Very little connection towards Wenton. That might open up an opportunity towards B, but again, there's still Crims here. So this was actually the combo that people were looking at very specifically for Fnatic. A big loss for Crims. Maybe his performance suffering as well with the lack of Olaf Meister as his duo. And Slummy as well, sitting back now, waiting. He's going to lead the charge as they push themselves in through the MiG-Cho point here, but nobody from Fnatic is going to meet them. Most of them are pretty far back. Either waiting around the wrap side, inside of the pit, or closer to the bomb set itself. And that's going to be Flusher that probably takes the first of the brunt of the damage now. Things will get smoked off, and he moves around to try and counter this out with his position by Arches. Okay, so we've got JW playing pit, we've got Dennis playing by Graveyard. This is a deadly crossfire, and we know Dennis is a bit of a master with those pistols, but he doesn't have much of a chance here. Flush is going to join in. And my god, that is some sexy play from JW, just catching him midair in that point. And it's just Slemmy left standing, and I didn't think the 1v4 was going to happen. So, didn't make really much impact on that pistol round, if I'm honest. Fnatic just lock it out. Unfortunately not. So, Fnatic is probably going to be able to keep their lead going. Now, Cloud9, no plant, so we would expect the second round force up to come in, and that's exactly what we're going to get here now. We'll see if they can upset the economy, the same thing that Fnatic did previously, but the prospects will not be looking good considering what we had in that last round. Good good attempt to get into the B bomb site, but just failing to find the openers. And look at the amount of SMGs coming out here for Fnatic. We've only got one rifle, quote unquote. I guess you can almost round up the UMP sometimes because it is actually a pretty damn good SMG of class, but by definition, we have four SMGs coming out. So this is farm time for Fnatic. They want to build up that bank as early as they can, and why not? You know, they're feeling pretty confident after what, only losing, was it one player, I think, in that opening pistol? So we'll see how this goes for Cloud9. They might just be walking into a bit of a meat grinder, but Flush sees exactly where that smoke came from. Gets ready with that molly. Got Dennis waiting as well by Quad. Cloud9 might just have to run the gauntlet pretty darn soon. Molly timing's great too. Flush just cut them all off. They've got one player sitting outside a porch. Dennis can push this, kill Slummy with n basically no repercussions for it at all. Oh, that nade as well to follow. That's just called Stewie, Shroud, and Skadoodle. And as you said, we had players cut off left, right, and centered by that Molly, and Flush is just waiting for his chance. It's good though that they that they are a little bit more patient about it when you consider, you know, a couple guns dropped here and there could turn the tides, and that's essentially what Fnatic used to win that second round back on the first half as well. So, Cloud9 are going to try something interesting. They're going to go for the pinch, and that's a good shot from nothing. Moves in, shuts down Flush initially, and Dennis, we saw before he was a little bit hesitant to peek around the port side. However, now the B-side defense has come in. The bomb is still holding behind the smoke, but that's going to expire, and this is all Crims to peek out. Wenton moving in there, but Crims doing the brunt of the damage to take down Skadoodle. While well, it was looking good initially here, it looks like Wenton is shutting things down. Crims will steal away the last one, but that makes up for the earlier kill that Wenton stole from him. So there you have it, Fnatic 11-6. And Cloud9 are going to have to go for the full save on this round. And I love that from Crims. His position didn't even get spotted out on that first kill. He just kind of waited out. They may have seen it and like maybe the death can come in, but him holding off so long still made it so applicable with that split coming through from CT. It was just really nicely performed. And they know the money situation is going to be pretty damn dire over for Cloud9. They can pretty much get nothing going here. Maybe a smoke flash up mid and just try and get some guns away at this point. But we're still going to see those SMGs out. And, well, every single kill that came through was with an SMG in that round. So even better for the money coming in for Fnatic. But Cloud9, what can you build? you pretty much discussing things here. Because look at nothing. He's so far back, just kind of sitting there like, oh, is anyone going to peek? Uh, I'll discuss things. We'll talk things through and try and find their way through this. Because they're walking into, well, a very present Fnatic, let's say, on Banana. 
Now just sitting here waiting to Cloud9. Unfortunately, don't really have a whole lot to get into the site. A single smoke sitting on nothing and a couple flashbangs to try and force their way through. So maybe if they get lucky with those flashbangs and find the connections on people like Crimson on the sandbags, they can cause some confusion there and grab some headshots with the P250s. But for the most part here, this should be a pretty straightforward round. And now, speaking of getting lucky with flashbangs, there we go. Crims is out in the open for that one. However, given time to recover, he's going to be able to pick up the first kill against Skadoodle. They move in. Shroud against himself inside of the CT smoke. Probably trying to work off of the noise here and shut down some of these guys. But there, all right, there's Flusha with one through the smoke. And although nothing picks up one kill with this P250, that's about it. It's a quick shutdown from Fnatic to give them a 12th. No, this is the round you've got to be looking at. The first three were uh, quick enough, let's say. Maybe a kindness to towards Cloud9. Yeah, I, I think we can say that. Um, now we've got to see what they can bring, because as you said, there was a little bit of uh, presence of mind shown by Cloud9 on the T side previously. We've been signed to maybe pay a little bit more attention. But I don't know if Fnatic cares at this point. They still have those two SMGs, and why not? They have the money to go for us and the rounds to kind of lay back on if they need it. So Dennis and Flusher both still rocking the SMGs. The P90 is still pretty damn devastating, but... You know, we'll see. JW though with that boost, just going to appear straight down. Oh, Skadoodle, this could be horrific for you, but he is Thankfully, just... Thankfully, that smoke is like perfect. Just. So I don't think they can spot it. Oh, we'll find Wait. out who gets it. Skadoodle oh. actually gets the better of him. I was curious as to where that bomb was actually positioned to. That was throwing me off because it almost <laughs> looked like for a moment he threw it in mid, at which point I was like, well, that sucks, but <laughs> looks like he threw it down inside of the tunnel instead. The AWP is still recoverable, bear in mind Dennis did have the P90. He can now just switch that one up. P90 goes over towards Flusher, so just kind of allocating resources at this point. But it does also mean that Slemmy's best opportunity is picking up a pretty lackluster SMG here. So, again, just keeping things relatively calm. And Cloud9 not over committing anywhere, taking their time on this, still looking for opportunities. And, well, you can't really blame them. They're only taking down JW. There's still at least, you know, you'd assume two players on each side unless they can pull one over and hopefully make that hit happen. Crims, though, has been on point so far in this game, so going for the B hit, especially when he's the point man for it, may not be the best option for Cloud9 here, but it does. <coughs> hey there. Hey, guys. All right, back in the game now. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I think we just had a bit of a PC crash. It wouldn't be right without it, but we are still in this one, and we are seeing what Cloud9 are up to. And at the moment, it's walking into the jaws of Crims. He's just locking these guys down. And again, you know, we question Crims and how he's been performing recently, but this time it looks like he's got everything in the right place. Slemmy trying to make a bit of a mad dash to keep hold of that AWP as best he can, but it's looking pretty unlikely. The boys are giving chase, but he might just be able to get away here and hide himself back in towards T-spawn as Fnatic try and make that dash down. But no, he does mean you know, be able to keep that in there, so he might be able to do something with that in the upcoming rounds. Again, though, with the scoreline getting so drastic against them, Cloud9 kind of have to start going for some of these rounds. They can't just abs you know, abstain away from them. They need to commit to it. And Fnatic's money is still so damn good here at this point. Audio is fixed now, guys. But Welcome C9 going to be going just for the direct buy here. Skadoodle getting himself the op. Previously, keep in mind that too. We didn't really get to note that that much. But he went for the glass cannon op buy. Worked out great initially. But ultimately, Fnatic do swing back control at the end of the round and still close it out. So C9 here with the Tech Nines in that op. That up. Unfortunately, with the current take they're looking to go for, really only going to become potent in the post-plant scenario. So they need to actually successfully get themselves into the site first. Then that op can become good. Or Fnatic have to rotate back over here. Not starting off so well, though, with Wenton getting that nice spray on the Stewie. Far from ideal, and Cloud9 just waiting for those seconds to fall into place. Maybe hope that utility starts to get worked away. And Skadoodle taking a risky bit of a peek at just above that smoke. Crims might actually check for this. Almost swung out on it. And he does manage to make it away, so no harm, no foul at this point. But they know that Fnatic may be out of position. The Molly's come in, but look at the flashes. Cloud9 are blinded at this point, but as so a Fnatic, Fnatic, this is unbelievable. They're so close to each other, but Wenton and Crims holding that back line, get absolutely shredded by the Tech Nines. And Flush is quick on this, though. He's straight over there, but by this point, the bomb's planted. And then he does a great deal of damage, but it takes no one down. Yeah, and as well, the good news, the good news about the chaos that happened with those flashbangs is it did end up buying a whole load of time. For the guys on, uh, for the guys on Fnatic to rotate over here, but they don't really seem to have the position. <laughs> so because of that one, now they might actually end up giving this one up. Five on three, have no information at all about the post plants. So with that said, it looks like Fnatic are just going to be falling away from this one and choosing to save the guns instead. Cloud9, they're going to pick up a seventh here. And that was the the flashes. Then were fantastic. It was literally, <laughs> or you, you saw initially, it was like, okay, well, it's Wenton and Crims pretty flashed, and then the entirety of Cloud9 as well. So Stewie even does get flusher on the way out. So I don't think they were able to recover 
that additional rifle, no, they just keep everyone alive by that point. They do get the AK, they kept the AWP towards Skadoodle, they still have all the armor there. And as said, they needed that round. There was no two ways about it. They desperately needed to get that into hand, and now they can supplement just beyond that, getting those rifles spread out. And such a great hit in the end, eventually working their way towards that B site. So Cloud9, a little bit of a glimmer of hope here now, as they do manage to strike back, but still a bit more, of t still quite a few more rounds actually to pick up here before they tie things up with Fnatic. And Fnatic still with plenty of cash after they had the good run here at the beginning of the half to go for another buy this time. And we're going to see that coming into play already. Stewie goes for the entry. It doesn't work out so well, but Shroud does catch the trade there. So one for one to start things off. Shroud also taking quite a bit of heat, down to 20 HP. So he's going to have to be cautious. Yeah, especially with those mollies coming in. You can see the fire just pushing him all the way back. He does make it out of life, so there will be no 1Gs up in chat. And now 4v4. Nice meme. I know. My memes are on point today, I feel. But yeah, it's not going to go too well at the point as already JW finds nothing, leaving Shroud, who was already wounded, just be an easy pick up there. JW already just kicking things off with a bang. Look at this guy just pretty much stopping this round as soon as it started to start looking like maybe Cloud9 could have some effect, leaving Skadoodle just left here going, well, what can I do, guys? You walk into JW like that, I, I, I can't pick up the pieces. First bit of stew, he's got a minute left, so it's not even like he just wants to roll in and die. He can actually try and play this back a little bit but with such limited options. As you mentioned, it's essentially a question of, well, guys, what more can I do? And Crim's just going to cut him off from on the top of the logs there. Fnatic strike right back. It'll reset the money once again. And Cloud9, we're going to take their time for a timeout here, but this is happening way too late, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a, it's a little late in the day for this one. That's uh, really what they've only picked up one round on their T side, so... Well, the other problem with this, too, is... I mean, this happens a lot with teams now, where they take this pause um, on the eco round, but, I mean, Fnatic's on 14 rounds. So if you choose not to buy here, then it's going to be on match point. You need to r win, like... I think it's eight rounds in a row? Yep. Maths, don't do on there, Maths. Why, why would you do that to me? Don't, don't do this. Don't do this, Blue. Anything but that. Yeah, it's 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 a horrible predicament, right, isn't it? It's, it's also... Pick it's also, your poison at this point. Those are the problem, too, where it's like, oh, we won't even win. We'll just take it to OT. <laughs> it, and it's a long road, and you're against Fnatic, so going that whole way, basically creating no forced or unforced errors is uh, pretty impossible. It, it's not impossible flat out, it can, and it has happened, but it's just very unlikely when you, you add up the odds of it's Fnatic, they're on Inferno, they're playing pretty well, you know, Wenton's doing just fine, you've got Crims doing just fine, JW's finding some real presence with the AWP, everything's, I wouldn't say excelling right now for Fnatic, but they're doing just enough to be able to close out these rounds very comfortably, and I haven't quite seen that yet from Cloud9, they just seem a little bit, a little bit further back, but we are underway, we are back into the live game, so we can hop back into that one and see how this goes down. Of course, they've had to buy into this as much as they could, because as you said, otherwise, playing up against Matchpoint, it's a long road back, let's see what they can do with this. So, one of the last chances here for Cloud9, and they are actually going to make the decision to force up instead of saving for that final round. Just gonna go for it here, but that only yields them a single AK on Shroud. It's just P250s and Tech 9s beyond that, and a very limited amount of utility. With the exception of Shroud, they've got enough smokes and whatnot, but again, no mollies, divorce CTs out of positions. Haven't really been playing sort of strats that would really benefit from that, unfortunately. Uh, they've been playing these sort of all-in sort of strats. It's very quick takes anyway, which is gonna force Fnatic out of position regardless, but... Now this needs to come out big time, and I think they're gonna hope they can overwhelm the players in apps again, but... It looks like Fnatic are actually positioned pretty well to counter that out, too. Yeah, horrifically without knowing, this is actually a very, very good position for Fnatic. Whether or not actually maybe they've read into this, how Cloud9 like to play these sort of rounds, I don't know. This is something maybe we could ever find out after the game, but Fnatic have certainly heard a couple of pieces in second mid, so they probably have a very good idea what's going on. And already here comes that pretty much a Tech 9 train at this point down towards CT Arch. Flash doesn't quite catch there, and it does open up a chance. Cloud9 get those two kills and start looking like they want to take on the A side, but Dennis is still here and can still do damage. The fact that they killed both the Boiler player and the Rap side player too is actually pretty amazing from Cloud9 because you think one's going to counter out the other eventually because it'll draw the attention, but nicely done by Cloud9. Pretty disciplined. They still taking a lot of damage, but now they've got Stewie inside of the library and there's a missed shot from JW. Down to 6 HP. Stewie doesn't know that yet, but he jumps over the second op shot, shuts it down, and now it all falls to Dennis alone inside of Boiler right now. Smoked out as well. That's going to go away pretty quickly, but he's got a 1 on 5. What's he going to do? Absolutely nothing. This will be an 8th round from C9. They're piecing it together for now. For now. That, is, that always, always. Like, you, you be careful. That is always the additive. <laughs> it always For now. It is North America. You get used <laughs> to doing that. All right, Dennis, can he catch anyone on the way out pretty much? He knows them. Wow. He nice. knows their money is shot, so any bit of damage he can deal here, pretty good. So all the 
Cloud9 remaining players, let's say after Dennis does that little bit of damage, do manage to make it away. Shroud can rebuy. They've still got a little bit here, so they'll, they'll be okay to suffer through this round. They'll be perfectly fine for that. And on the other side of things, Fnatic still don't have to worry too much. They've still got a little bit to play through until it does get a little bit dangerous. Look at Stewie, 21 and 12 right now. Stewie's having a sick game. Absolutely. TNCT. Yeah, dominating the playing field for Cloud9. It's the rest of the team that we need to see stepping up big time here now. Yeah, we're hoping someone can start finding that form with him, otherwise it's going to be a little bit of a one-sided affair, sadly. It's weird with Shroud because he started off great with that pit position. There was like two, two or three rounds within the first five or six that he did an amazing job of holding inside, but we haven't really seen all that much of him here on the T side, and even in the later rounds back on the CT mm. side as well. Yeah, very middle of the pack for Shroud, which is a little unfortunate. Then again, Slemmy is on four kills to 15 at the moment, so not a great performance from him, but we know what he brings to the team, and you know if he can find a little bit more than this so far, you could see maybe a very much more competitive Cloud9 here. But again, let's see what Cloud9 can bring, because it has been down to these <laughs> these gun rounds they've been kind of fumbling on, where they've been down to the Tech 9s and such. They seem to make it work a lot better. But now we're back to what is arguably the default here, Fnatic. You can just see them just waiting ever so patiently, flush it by CT, Dennis playing towards Quad, JW just down by Pit on that balcony. So just waiting to see what Cloud9 are going to do, giving them enough rope to just wrap around their neck. So 50 seconds to go, Cloud9 have the opportunity, they still have the smokes, the flashes, they can still build a play out of this. Also, they haven't found anybody too as they moved in on the mid-choke point. Fnatic learned their lesson from that very quickly and now just sit themselves on the site. Or Dennis too is in a position where he's almost guaranteed to find at least one kill when he catches them off guard, but he also just dropped down, so no, no one heard that, so he's free to peek, but he misses the mark on the first one, takes the duel, there's a quick trade that comes out from Skidoodle, but Flusher finds another one, nothing though, up from the balcony, also gonna pick up JW down inside of the pit, so brings it into a three on two, and with Shroud's additional kill on a Flusher, they grab the site. And this is huge now. They should be able to lock this one in as best they can. Decent positions for this after plant. Crimson went and the B team now have to make their way in. Let's see if they can find a little bit of an opportunity here. Nothing's probably going to be the first point of contact. He's just playing by the truck, backs away. Skadoodle still watching the push up as well. There you go. There's a second piece of defense coming in. And now Crims has to back away. There was no chance he could make it in alone at that point. And a very well played out round from Cloud9. I guess fairly fortunate that Dennis found no one on that initial contact, but then they made it count. And actually, you can see Shroud got to be a little bit careful here. He could be possibly walking into Crim's setup very well for this, and Shroud's not checking. That's that's going to be a little bit of damage done. I'm not sure how bad they, the money is. They can't afford that right now. Money's Ouch. still pretty low for these guys. It's going to be okay for some people, but for Shroud, that's not looking so good at the moment as he's going to go by right down to the bottom. And when and you, like, you see the amounts that are left over, like 6,300, you think to yourself, no, it's fine. But the problem is, is that Fnatic are on 14 rounds, so you yeah. always need to make sure you have at least enough for one single full buy coming up in the next round. And with you being reset, only having 1,000 or 1,500 left over is not going to give you a really good amount so if you're looking for another full buy to try and challenge Fnatic's mm -hmm. ultimate victory. It's okay, so he's going to try and dig them out of their debt. He's got the MAC-10. He's ready to go farming. Let's see if you can find any willing vi victims over by B. At the moment, that nade could have done a great deal of damage if he actually did just put it in. He kind of looked like he wanted to put one down towards uh, the sandbags there. Does catch Crims pretty well, actually, and have all the players you want to get some damage on. It's probably a good choice as Crims, of course, was the one to remain with that rifle. The others, uh, Deagle, 2P250s, and then JW on the clean save, just probably looking for the AWP later into the game. Again, their money in the best position. Crims does get flashed out, pushed away, went and still holds the angle. And you can see it here, very, very cautious Cloud9. They they cannot afford to drop these rounds. They need Stewie to be the one at the forefront here, making these plays count. They force Wenton back, and they do take Banana Control. They've got one minute left still. And Wenton posting up on that B-bomb site now, ready to go, and hardly calling some of the earlier rotations over as well. Flusha has moved himself in, but some of them also moving further back off of the site into construction now. That actually is going to be Wenton himself. As they're still thinking Cloud9 may be considering the A-bomb site, which is good because they still have players at the mid-choke point. Yeah, and Shroud had to go all the way back basically to spawn to pick up that bomb. I was getting a little worried when both of these kind of... Uh, yeah, these kind of splits were starting to work their way towards the site itself. They do have enough time, of course, to go pick it back up, and now they rejoin a B. So it looks like they're going to go for the B hit here as a commitment. So it's going to be down to Crims and Wenton to hold on to this. Stewie leading the way with that MAC-10, and no one spotted these guys out yet. Crims can still do a... He's done a bit oh, of damage, mind. but gets denied. <laughs> Skadoodle has enough of it. He's done with this. And now down to the players who pretty much just had the pistol. Of course, Wenton as well did only have a P250, so limited amount of what he could achieve in this. Still deadly, still able to do some work here, I can imagine. But at the moment, for Cloud9, you want to keep these rifles. You want to keep everything you started with. And even that upgrade there, coming in for Stewie, is brilliant. He can then go from the MAC-10 to the AK and hopefully just stay alive. But a big bit of a challenge coming in with three players staring him down. 
Grim is giving that false sense of security up on Spindles <laughs> when no one spots him on the initial push, but then Skadoodle comes out to teach him a lesson real quick, and now Stewie just punishing these players. Obviously not dropping anything miraculous here, but just racking up his own kill total. Once again, three kills on this round, found all of them. And with the exception of Skadoodle's kill onto Crims, which was the AK, so still a very important kill. He dominates the playing field once again for this team. Good stuff for Stewie, being the man with the MAC-10. And look at the bank now. He was able to build up so much, recover that rifle. This is pretty much not, I wouldn't say completely stabilized their economy, but enough that they can now wave uh, through a couple of rounds. And if they lose too many, it'll be game over anyway. So they've pretty much got a good enough buffer for now until it's too late. So looking at Fnatic, they're going back in on the buy. So why not? No AWP with JW this time. That is the ultimate thing. They just need to keep a streak going for as long as possible here. Prevent Fnatic from getting to 15 rounds is the ultimate dream. Because then he still the potential for a 16-14, but as soon as they pick up one, it becomes infinitely harder. So the peak coming up there from Skadoodle, but again, responding under pressure. Shuts down Krim, same player that he took down in the last round there, as he tries to get aggressive to push up and punish that smoke boost. Wenton's playing a very dangerous game, just being this close. Of course, he can buy time maybe with the rotate, but if he gets overrun, that B site is pretty much his. So Cloud9 are desperate to get through here, but... I don't think Stewie wants to walk through that smoke at this point. Wenton is just waiting so patiently on the other side. And while this happens, you can see the rest of Fnatic pulling themselves together towards Ace. Skadoodle is desperately low, but he's still done a great start into this round. So, again, Fnatic looking like, well, maybe they're in house. Maybe they're starting to get some control here. Dennis is very close at this point. Fnatic not playing that passive game. We are seeing them up close and personal. And there you go, Slemmy punishes Dennis. And already Cloud9 signed a build. It's down to JW and it's down to Flusher to lock this one through. And it looks like they've had enough of this Cloud9 run, but where's the backup? Suddenly coming, you can see Flusher's getting himself angled pretty darn well here. Slemmy's alone on the side, gets singled out. He gets taken down. This is not looking so good now as it's down to two players. Shroud picking up one up top there, and I believe they've spotted the position of Flush on site, but as soon as Sturry tunes around, it's Flusher that jumps down and picks up the first kill there. Up close and personal. Stewie's going to miss that first shot. Falling back now. He tries to run, but Flusher hot on his tail. Shuts him down. And there's Fnatic's match point now. Only one more away from closing things out here. Flusher just looking beastly now. I think that was four kills coming in for him then. So damn good at uh, picking up the rounds of matter. And considering that was pretty important, that was about to see Cloud9 starting to build a bit of momentum. Confidence looking a little bit better. Nope. Oh, Fnatic had enough of that. They're bored of that one. They want to get it back done and dusted at a nice, comfortable scoreline. And Cloud9, here you go. This is the run they've got to go on. 10 to 15. Now, Fnatic on match point. This is best of ones, bearing in mind. And this is a risky run when you pick Inferno up against these boys. There is always a little additional. You can see that CT aggression coming out now. Wenton this time finds Stewie. And have all the players to fall for Cloud9. That's probably the man you'd want to stay alive at this point. They're just going for the aggressive punishment now. They want to shut them down. Force all hope out of Cloud9. If they can get them punished right from the beginning, and they're lining up that flank too with Crimson half position there. Got them going through the mid choke point. Dan is just ripping them to shreds as they try to push in here. He's done great damage to one. Flush is going to finish Slemmy off. Shroud did respond by taking down Dennis, but now a peak from Flush again brings it down to just Shroud at 7 HP. He's going to go down, and there you go. Fnatic are going to close things out against Cloud9, 16 to 10. Welcome back to Planet Earth, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> as finally we have a map that makes sense. And a lot of people questioned whether or not this was going to be the game that provided the upset because arguably we can Fnatic, maybe Cloud9 on a run. No, that is the big, big no run across the screen. As you said, we are back to reality. EU wins against NA for now. There's more games coming up and we're going to have to see how that one unfolds, but there you have it. Fnatic picking up the win over Cloud9.